Hello Explorers, thanks for joining us again and welcome back to another exciting and informative video on our YouTube channel. If you are joining us for the first time, I want to thank you for watching. In this episode, we shall be looking at the legacy of French colonialism in Africa. This video is going to be in two sections. The first part of this video we are going to cover the French legacy in Africa. The second episode which will be on the second video that we'll publish in the days ahead will be about the French influence in African politics over the past few decades. So without any more delay, let's just dive straight into it. For almost a century and a half, France maintained a substantial colonial empire in Africa, stretching from the Maghreb to the western and central sub-Saharan African regions. Though direct rule ended in the early 1960s, French influence over its former possessions continued. Through political, economic and cultural connections, France has attempted to maintain a hegemonic foothold in Francophone Africa, both to serve its interest and maintain a last bastion of prestige associated with the legacy of past mastery. However, do these relations retain an essential colonialist character? To determine this, I am going to look into the first brief. I would analyze the main rationale behind France's imperial expansion, its mission to civilize. We shall also in this video to explore France's more recent existing relationship with its former positions. We have made lots of videos on this particular channel. If you are new here, we encourage you to check the entire channel for you to see more exciting and educating content regarding the global African perspective. Without any more delay, let's just dive straight into it. If you consider French influence in African politics over the past few decades, France has good cause to seek to improve its image in Africa. Resentment has built up due to political interference and armed intervention, not least the legacy of the 1994 Rwanda genocide. French forces facilitated the training and expansion of the forces Armée Rwandaise from 1990 to 1993 and provided huge shipment of arms. Though stabilization was the chief motivation, France effectively, if not unwittingly, helped militarize Rwanda's prior to pre-planned massacre. Shocked at those events and growing chorus of humanitarian advocacy in France, civil society have led to the recent government reforming the terms of their African military cooperation and engagement. As noted with regards to my analysis, France has been amicably to settle some withdrawal, such as the pull out of over 12,000 troops and transfer of their sovereignty to Senegal in 2010, yet still retain the will and capacity to intervene, as demonstrated in Ivory Coast when French forces long in theater under the forced Lacombe assisted in overthrowing Laurent Gbagbo at the time. Ultimately, France has successfully used its security presence since decolonization to exert influence in countries where it has interests, maintaining both regional hegemony and its division of order and stability. Why that strength is still important, strategic rationales for maintaining substantial presence and weakening its addition to the very French importance with regards to dealing with other African countries as the public opinion is shaping differently with regards to France's presence in the continent of Africa. By the African Union forming and creating in 2004 uh, the new African Peace and Security Council in its effect to stand by itself to help Africa solve its own security issues. France perceived this new option as something that will bring in some roadblocks regarding its operation in the continent of Africa. France has also considerable military presence in Africa. Decolonization did not mark the end of France's presence in Africa, but rather restructuring of the imperial relationship. And as we all see that Frank Afrique, the political, security and economic and cultural relationship, though diminished somewhat, remains today still in different aspects. Additionally, 60 years on Francophone countries in Africa still do not have true independence and freedom from France. 
you consider these other aspects in different ways from Ivory Coast to Guinea and other African countries some are beginning to sever the relationship the more importantly the political system in many of those countries was introduced by France shortly before independence France decided to abolish the parliamentary system in some countries like Ivory Coast and introduced a presidential regime in which all territories and powers are in the hands of the head of state if you consider this aspect only one person with the power needs to be manipulated france afrique a french influence in former colonies is called in different aspects remain intact particularly galling to young and resentment has increased in different areas in france beginning in the 1980s many french presidential candidates have been announced the plans to put in the end of france afrique but nothing has been done so far for many years in reviewing and finalizing this particular episode in looking at different ways the main goal of colonization with West Africa was to turn West African countries into French state. This means changing their way of living, making the official language French, and making them convert to Christianity. French colonization changed African culture, but today, France army keeps its grips on African ex-colonies. After 150 years of French colonization of Central African Republic, there was only the one person with a doctoral degree when the country became independent in 1960. Most French colonies in Africa are still under French rule and culture of assimilation. These studies are the king of the democratic dictatorship, which in why those people are fleeing their homes. Simply 14 African countries are still forced by France to pay colonial tax for benefits of slavery and colonization. 80% of the 10 countries with the lowest literacy rates in the world among adults are in Francophone Africa. France continues to collect rents on the colonial buildings they have left in those countries. It is estimated that those African countries pay over 500 billion US dollars as colonial tax to France each year. In short, until France leaves Africa, economic hegemony and coups will continue. French presence in Africa dates to the 17th century, but the main period of colonial expansion came in the 19th century with the invasion of the Ottoman Argus in 1830. Conquest in West Equatorial Africa during the so-called the Scramble for Africa and the establishment of the Protectorate in Tunisia and Morocco in the decades before the First World War. To these were added part of German Togo and Cameroon, assigned to France as League of Nations mandate after World War II. By 1930, French colonial Africa encompasses the vast confederation of French West Africa and French Equatorial Africa, the Western Maghreb, the Indian Ocean Islands of Madagascar, Reunion and the Camaros, and Djibouti in the Horn of Africa. Within this African empire, territories in Sub-Saharan Africa were treated primarily as colonies to exploit, while a settler's colonial model guided colonization efforts in the Maghreb. Although only Algeria drew European immigrants throughout Africa, French rule was characterized by sharp contradictions between the rhetoric commitment to civilization of indigenous people through cultural, political and economic reform and the harsh realities of violent conquest, economic exploitation, legal inequalities and sociocultural disruption. At the same time, French domination was never as complete as the solid blue swatch on maps of Great France would suggest. As in all empires, colonized people throughout French Africa developed strategies to resist or evade France authority or coped up so-called civilized missions and coped with unhevels of occupation. After the First World War, new and more organized forms of contestation emerged as Western educated reformers, nationalists and trade unions pressed by a variety of means for a more equitable distribution of political and administrative powers frustrated in the interwar period, the demands for change spurred the process of decolonization after a second world war effort by French authorities. Some African leaders replaced imperial rule with a federal organization failed 
and followed the 1958 constitutional referendum. Almost all French territories in sub-Saharan Africa claimed their independence. In North Africa, Tunisia and Morocco nationalists were able to face the French to negotiate independence in 1950s. But decolonization in Algeria, with its million European settlers, came only after a protracted and brutal war that left deep scars in both post-colonial states, although former French rule in Africa had ended by 1962, the ties in forge continued to shape relations between France and its colonial territories throughout uh, the continent. We want to thank you for watching. If you are new to this channel, we encourage you to subscribe and share our videos with your different network. Let us know if you are from one of those countries in Africa that France is continuing its colonial aspect. Let us know as well if this is something that you consider is holding most of these African countries behind. If you are new to this channel, we encourage you to check some of our informative video on this channel. Help us grow the channel, subscribe and share the video with your different network. We are looking forward to meeting you soon in our next episode and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.